journey into the untamed wilderness. A battle against the elements, a race against the clock, the arena where man and machine are tested to the very limit of endurance. This is Rally Raid. It's one hell of a ride. It's the most brutal, the most gruelling kind of motorsport that you can get. One of the toughest things I've ever done. To be here one day away. All the hard work has finally paid off. This is Rally Raid. It's like that. All over the world, the brave and the bold test themselves by accepting the challenge to race off-road. The goal is simple, find the fastest route across natural terrain and finish ahead of your competitors. The perfect combination of navigational sense, team dynamic and spectacular driving skills will crown a champion. But it's not just about winning. Rally Raid is just a big adventure and that's what I think what draws everybody back. Buckle up for this amazing journey as we give you the inside track on this fast and fearless pursuit. From the humble origins of the sport to today's highly developed technical races, this is the ABC of Rally Raid. As we navigate this incredible motorsport, we've created some flashcards to help you keep up with the pace setters. Take, for example, Rally Raid. A long-distance off-road race which takes place over several days. Now that you know the definition of Rally Raid, let's step it up a gear. You may have heard about Rally, for example, the World Rally Championship, a 13-round global series, each typically three days long, which sees the driver sprint on surfaces like gravel, tarmac and snow. Rally Raid is just way longer, and the course leads through the most stunning and remote landscapes. Our uh, sport in desert is the cross country. It's like endurance, very, very hard, very tough. You can do between five days in normal uh, cross country uh, until uh, 15 days, like in Dakar. You sit every day uh, between eight, nine hours driving. Long hours indeed, and competitors choose between bikes, quads, cars and trucks to chase down the roughly 10,000 kilometre distance from the starting line to the chequered flag. That's almost the length of the entire WRC season. This is what makes Rally Raid so unique. Races are incredibly long and truly off-road, forged by the spirit of adventure. The original marathon rally dates back to 1907, when 40 competitors traversed the route from Beijing to Paris. These brave pioneers battled over every centimetre of the 16,000 kilometre journey with their 45 horsepower cars through Central Asia, crossing the finish line two months later in Paris. While the sport was growing, it took a piece of luck to shape the modern rally raid. In 1962, Hollywood stuntman Bud Eakins was asked to test the endurance of a Honda Scrambler bike. He and his brother Dave embarked upon a 1,530-kilometer timed run from Tijuana to La Paz in Mexico. The trail they carved turned into a race, and in 1976, the first Baja 1000 was held in the Eakins brothers' tire tracks. Over the following years, this route turned into one of the most grueling off-road races in the world. The start line of a Baja 1000 is probably the most nerve-wracking race of all. In 1977, another coincidence would change Rally Raid forever, when French motorcycle racer Thierry Sabine got lost in the Sahara Desert during the Abidjan to Nice race. So fascinated was he by the seemingly never-ending terrain that he invented the world-famous Dakar Rally as the perfect test of rallying ability. In 1978, the first Paris-Dakar rally took place, and in the subsequent decades, this famous off-road race established itself as the world's most prestigious motorsport events. Rally Raid attracts a huge fan base, and today, the Dakar alone is watched by over 4 million spectators en route and some 1 billion TV viewers worldwide. 
Rally raids take place all over the globe, with playgrounds ranging from the deserts of Abu Dhabi and the mountains of Bolivia to the historic Silk Way in China. Much like the diverse and contrasting backdrops of Rally Raid itself, there are many facets to this sport, not least when it comes to the vehicles and their rapidly evolving technology. The four categories of vehicles are subdivided into different classes, each with their own technical and mechanical standards. The high-end T1 improved cross-country vehicles lead the way in technical quality and innovation. Like in Formula One, these cars are custom-built from scratch. And the top teams such as Peugeot, Mini and Toyota leave no detail to chance, rebuilding their vehicles every year in a bid to craft the perfect rally car. All the evolutions of the car has never, never finished. You can always improve the car. You can always work in suspension, work in the engine. It is a never-ending never story. You always keep working, you always keep improving. The most important components of a rally raid car are determined by the extreme conditions encountered during a race. These cars run a special double suspension setup which has huge amounts of travel to absorb the obstacles found across such different terrains while still hitting speeds of 200 kilometers an hour. For the race engineers, one key question has to be answered, whether to go with two wheel drive or four by four. A vehicle that supplies power to all four of its wheels. Four-wheel drive vehicles are definitely king of the off-road, but organisers level the playing field by affording two-wheel drive cars a little more wiggle room within the regulations. Normally it's more four-wheel drive, but we decided to go ahead for two-wheel drive because we believe it's a good concept. The car is lighter than uh, the four-wheel drive and we have more travel of suspension. We have about uh, 40, 45 centimeters of travel of suspension. We are allowed to get bigger wheels. Bike riders get to swerve the drivetrain configuration topic altogether. And though bikes are undoubtedly the toughest vehicles with which racers try to tame the terrain, many of today's car drivers, including Cyril Day Prey, started their rally raid career on only two wheels. It's much more physical to handle the bike, staying glued to the handlebar the whole day. This was a big difference between the bike and the car. Unlike a normal bike, a rally raid bike requires a few more tweaks and a bit more tampering. So the main part with the, the rally bike that's really different to any motocross bike is the navigation tower for us. This is pretty much the most important thing we need. We need a lot of fuel on board, so we have one tank that's at the rear and two tanks at the front. In total, we can get about 34 litres on board on this bike. Underneath the motor, on the bash plate, we have a water tank. This is a compulsory thing we need to have. We can use this water to repair the bike and then basically yeah, fill our radiators back up. Or if yeah, we're in a lot of trouble and we're stuck and stranded out the desert, we can also use this for drinking water. Quads are small but powerful vehicles and are hugely popular, even though they're relatively new to the sport. The number of riders in the quad category increases every year. Somewhat bigger than the quads are the trucks. These beasts weigh eight tons and roll along to the tune of 1,000 horsepower. Their top speed is limited to 160 kilometers an hour to prevent them overtaking the cars. But you might be wondering how a truck with that much power and more importantly that much weight is able to take the abuse of the Dakar Rally. Well, if you look in here, you'll find the answer. It's a fully adjustable double damper setup with 300 millimeters of travel. And that's what allows these things to do things like this. Now, in the back of a normal truck, you might find frozen fish or sandwiches. I don't know, not the case here. Excuse me. This is a large box, and there's also another one which is normally mounted here, which is filled with spare parts when the crews are out on the stages. Up here, you have a 60-litre air tank, which is feeding the air brakes. And over here, two more 30-litre air tanks, which is doing the same job. Just take a look at the size of this tire. Now, believe it or not, this thing weighs 150 kilograms and is 1.2 meters across. They can adjust 
the pressure inside the tyre. They reduce that pressure over soft, sandy surfaces to get more grip, and on hard surfaces, they increase the pressure to get less friction and be able to go quicker. Now, unlike in a car where there's just a co-driver and a driver, in a truck, there's actually three people. In this seat is the mechanic, here is the co-driver or navigator, and obviously where I am is the driver. Trucks not only race in their own class, but they also carry out a vital role, support. Rally raid rules state that only registered competitors are allowed to help each other out during a race. So many teams enter their support trucks into this category. The Russian Kamaz team dominates the truck category. Engine manufacturers by day, Kamaz employees double up as racing team members and their trucks are tested under the toughest, most extreme conditions. The Silkway Rally is their home race. Setting off from Moscow, they spend two weeks racing some 9,500 kilometers across Kazakhstan to China. Named after and roughly following the ancient Silk Road trade routes that connected Eurasia, the Silk Way provides a perfect proving ground, but the ride is anything but smooth. Drivers from 35 countries take to the terrain in around 385 vehicles, passing through 14 stages of the most inhospitable terrain on the planet. The inaugural edition of this race took place in 2009, and though only cars and trucks are currently permitted to race, from now on drivers had better watch their blind spots. In 2018, bikes will be added for the first time. The Russian Kamaz team called the Silkway Rally their own, having taken the title the past five years in a row. In the car category, it was Cyril Desprez claiming back-to-back -back victories in 2016 and 2017. Rally raids like the Silkway follow a specific set of rules based on the demands of the route. A route consists of various stages. Competitors wake up each day knowing they have to face a new stage, which are generally split into road sections and special stages. Special stages are routes across various kinds of terrain and the aim is simple. Try to navigate from A to B in the fastest time. This time is recorded to give teams their position in the overall standings and the fastest competitor of the previous stage starts first. In between special stages there are waypoints and when a driver hits a waypoint this information is fed back to the organisers via a GPS to ensure that all competitors stay on track. The road sections or liaisons take place on public roads in everyday traffic. These sections are controlled by the organisers and are subject to speed limits on the way to the bivouac. A temporary camp where teams and organisers rest between stages. While the drivers prepare for the next race day, primarily focusing their attention on the navigation, their vehicles are serviced and repaired by the mechanics overnight in the bivouac. However, on stages that last for two consecutive days known as marathon stages, competitors have to repair their machines by themselves. Normally this is just a small check, change, we, we change the spare tyre. While it's a rare opportunity for the top-level pros to get their heads under the hood, this task is an everyday chore for the much more hands-on amateurs who race in their own class. Malimoto is a motorcycle class and it's a class in the rally whereby you're not allowed any outside support. So you can't have an assistance crew, you can't have a van, you can't have a vehicle with mechanics, there's no mechanics. All you're allowed to bring to the rally with you is a bike, a small metal box with some spare parts and tools in and a bag with your riding gear in and that's all you're allowed. This is the marathon stage, so this is the one stage in the rally where the service crews for the other riders are not allowed to touch their bikes, so only the riders can work on the bikes. For me, it's just like another day in the office, it's just like, okay, I have to work on my bike tonight, I have to do that every night, so it doesn't make much difference. These rules apply to all rally raid races, such as the Dakar Rally. However, North America's own desert races, like the infamous Baja 1000, is a completely different race. 
Commencing from Ensenada, Mexico annually, this iconic race in the Baja Californian Peninsula is non-stop. Though the route and distance changes slightly each year, competitors are guaranteed to encounter a mix of desert tracks and paved highway that spans some 1,000 miles. The clever competitors pre-run the course to check it out in advance, and on race day, it's simply the first past the post. The most recent Baja 1000 race winner in the car class clocked in at 19 hours and 53 minutes. Unlike in rally raids, teams can swap drivers at any time, and there's even a category for old VW Beetles, which won't be bothering the unlimited trophy trucks. Highest class of off-road racing vehicles in the Baja 1000. These bad boys do 120 miles an hour over four-foot ruts. The Baja 1000 keeps that good old-fashioned American off-road racing spirit at its heart, and everything is just that little bit different. Though all races differ in one way or another, every participant agrees that there's no I in team. If, as the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a kid, it takes a well-oiled, finely tuned team to finish a rally raid. So for the race like a Dakar, it's around 20 people for one car. Most of them, they are mechanics, managers for sure, doctors, osteopaths, some people for the logistics, some people also for the communication, and that's all. Teams follow their drivers on service routes and build a service park at the bivouac every day. Cars and trucks have a very important team member inside the cockpit, the co-driver. The driver sits behind the steering, he drives, and the co-driver tries to organize all the rest. Continue straight. I uh, control the time and the route, so I give to Nasser, to the driver, all the information he needs to go fast and safe from start to finish. For the bike riders, however, solitude is bliss. They take on this amazing adventure alone. This impressed me a lot. He is alone on his bike, driving, co-driving, uh, doing everything, and sometimes they are more fast than us. So for me, the real uh, hero are the bikers. They are a little bit crazy, I think, to do what they do. Rally Raid is both demanding and dangerous. Athletes undergo intense physical and technical training to prevent unnecessary collisions and limit the impact of the unavoidable ones. If you're going to crash, do it right and try to get it out of the way during testing. Each year, teams descend on Morocco to get to grips with their equipment and workflows. The Morocco Rally not only provides the perfect playground for testing and tuning ahead of the Dakar race, but this five-day, 2,500-kilometre event is also one of the most magical races on the calendar. This is a good uh, step, you know, for uh, next, uh, next Dakar. Uh, it's very important for us. Morocco also demands highly skilled navigation. The rules regarding navigation are very strict. And the only tools allowed are a trip master, which counts distance, a special GPS point provided by the organisers, which keeps an eye on waypoints, a compass and the roadbook. A book handed out by race organisers featuring all navigational information. The roadbook contains navigation notes on dangerous terrain, special or key features in the landscape, and of course, changes of direction. We spend a lot of time marking our roadbook to give us our directions for the day, so from kilometres and waypoints and, and distances. At the top here, we have a speedo cap, which they basically have our kilometres for distance, and then also our, uh, our bearing, so compass heading. So, if it tells us to go 340 degrees at kilometre 14, this is what we have to follow and read in the meantime while riding the dirt bike around there out in the middle of the desert. 
When racing through open desert, navigation is crucial for tactics, strategy and survival. Since the fastest rider of the previous stage opens the track the next day, first place is not always the position you want to aim for. You have a huge disadvantage if you start first. If it's a dune stage and you start first, no matter how fast you ride, you'll, you'll lose time because the guys coming from behind can see, you know, everywhere you go, you draw a perfect line. So anytime you turn, they cut 300 meters off of your corner, you know? So I think it's just a feeling that you get uh, with a lot of time in the dune. One race set almost entirely amid sand dunes is the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. Since 1991, this five-day motorsport spectacular has taken place across the United Arab Emirates. And although it was originally for cars, motorcycles and quads have been allowed since 1995. This special desert race can boast a long entry list filled with the most prestigious teams and drivers. The sport is demanding, dangerous and sometimes even deadly. The Dakar remains the most dangerous rally in the world and since its inception in 1978, over 60 people have lost their lives while striving to make it to the finish line. Hubert Auriel defined the term determination in 1987. While leading, he crashed badly but finished the stage with two broken ankles before retiring from the race. <laughs> Originally stretching from Paris to Senegal's capital, Dakar, this legendary race was forced to rethink its route because of the threat of terrorism and, in 2009, moved to South America. Nowadays, the Dakar starts in Peru and carves a trail through Bolivia before reaching Argentina. An epic 12 stages traverse over 9,000 kilometres. South America's typically unpredictable and inhospitable weather plays a huge role. With altitudes of almost 4,600 metres, searing heat and heavy downpours, this can lead to dangerous crashes. A special safety item is the Iritrack. A device transmitting positional information and measuring irregular activity. In other words, it can tell when competitors have crashed. The Iritrack also acts as a phone so that the organisers can speak directly to the drivers and, in the event of an accident, dispatch the medical team. We have ten cars, we have four helicopters. Each helicopter and, and car has two doctors and we have a team of 25 doctors here in the hospital. Maximum is five minu minutes after the crash, a medical helicopter will be there. I can imagine that the medical support is faster in the Dakar than if you have a crash in a highway in France, for example, for sure. Although medical support is scrambled remarkably quickly, often other competitors help out as first responders. Yes, it's in the rule book, but sportsmanship is a big part of the spirit of Rally Raid, and all competitors abide by the motto that no man is left behind. It's a part of the games, you know, if we see really bad crash, immediately we stop and we help the crew. So this is radio spirit. Nobody stay behind during the Dakar. A true legend is without doubt Stefan Petter Hansel, taking part in every race since 1988 and winning the event 13 times, six times on a bike and seven times in a car. That's why everyone calls him Monsieur Dakar. The Dakar was uh, at the beginning a big adventure, you know, because it was in Africa. Uh, at the beginning it was without a GPS, without uh, safety, nothing. The, the essence of the, of the Dakar is uh, the spirit of, uh, of the driver. This spirit led to a historic win in 2001. Jutta Kleinschmidt became the first woman to win the Dakar. She crossed the line first after almost 10,000 kilometres and her biggest dream came true. Inspired by the icons of this remarkable event, a young Australian has recently embarked on his own Dakar career, claiming a truly special debut victory. Despite a horrific crash while racing in California in which he severely injured his neck, Toby Price fought his way back to fitness and in 2016 became the first Australian to win the Dakar, 
although being told he would never race again. This is unbelievable. What a comeback story from injury for Toby Price to win the greatest race on the planet. Two years ago, I definitely wouldn't have thought I would have been doing this. All the hard work has finally paid off. The spirit of Dakar shines as brightly as ever, and incredible, inspirational new stories are written every year. Rally Raid might have started out simply as a bold vision, sparked by a passion for adventure and a desire to challenge nature with machines. But over the last 60 years, it has evolved into an iconic sport and a testament to the human spirit. The Baja 1000 and Dakar Rally remain the biggest off-road marathon events in the world, demanding environments traversed by brave competitors on quads and bikes, in trucks and cars. Driving skill, engineering and navigation are a must, but nothing is more important than teamwork and spirit. Along the way, competitors become first responders, establishing a camaraderie unlike any other sport on the planet. Every racer hunts down that finishing line with a chance of winning, and in the end, those tracks through the wilderness vanish, ready to carve a fresh canvas for the following year.